waste. This could have been such a sweet deal for us. Yeah. Bad luck. Goodbye, cop. Goodbye, Peyton. Ah, the mammoth and the mastodon. To the untrained eye, these two animals are synonyms of each other. Yet, to the skilled eye, they look still like synonyms, but nonetheless distinct enough to make an entire video milking the idea. So let's look at those distinctions. Firstly, the mammoth. Woolly mammoth, to be exact. I have to make the distinction because there are many species of mammoth. All mammoths belong to the genus Mammothus, who are all part of this tree, the proboscideans. Remember the scree for later. They are then grouped into Elephantidae, where all modern elephants and mammoths are, and then the mammoth genus finally splits off in, from the genre Elephantina, the genus of the Asian elephant. This means that, surprisingly, Asian elephants are more related to woolly mammoths than African elephants. Within Mammothus, there are other species of mammoths, with the woolly mammoth, Mammothus primigenius, being the most iconic and the most woolly. Yet we're also one of the final steps in mammoth evolution. Mammoths originally evolved in Africa, five million years ago, with the species Mammothus saplanifrons, the South African mammoth. The next jump in mammoth evolution was the Southern Mammoth, who migrated across Eurasia, and later evolved into the massive steppe mammoth, Mammothus trogontherii, the largest mammoth species. Steppe mammoths then evolved into the smaller woolly mammoth only 700,000 years ago and, while crossing into the Americas by a land bridge, evolved into the Columbian Mammoth. There was even a fun-sized mammothus, the Pygmy Mammoth, who, after living on the Channel Islands of California, had to shrink down to only 1.5 meters at the shoulder. Because of their very close lineage to elephants, mammoths share many similarities with modern elephants, even among other proboscideans. It is much easier, in fact, just to list the differences between the two animals. Mammoths are essentially just elephants adapted for the cold environments found in the Ice Age, shown in their smaller ears, which helped conserve heat. As well as for woolly mammoths, two coats of fur, both an inner and outer coat. Although it should be said that for mammoth species living in more temperate regions, like the Colombian mammoth, would have been pretty bare of fur. They also had longer tusks, because, you know, why not? Besides that, mammoths were still pretty dang similar to elephants. One of the most interesting similarities is their teeth. As a famous paleontologist once said, if you have some pachyderm dietary suspicion, just look at their dentition, and mammoth teeth show how these animals lived, probably more than any other part of their body. The teeth are like elephant teeth, large flat molars with enamel ridges running across the surface of the tooth. Therefore, these specialized teeth were built for grinding up tough grasses. This shows mammoths lived on the open grasslands of the northern hemisphere, probably living in social herds, traveling the plains for nutrients, mirroring elephants on the warm grasslands of the modern era. On the opposing side, we have mastodons. Mastodons, unlike mammoths, are not actually closely related to elephants. Mastodons are in the order of proboscideans, but wait, where are they? Oh, they're all the way over there in the family Mammothidae. Mastodon migration and evolution is rather alike to that of mammoths. The first member of Mammothidae was the Eozygodon, mainly found in Africa and a few parts of Asia, with the huge Zygolophodon, one of the largest mammals ever to walk the earth, with tusks as long as cars, superfeeding Eozygodon and conquering most of Eurasia, as well as a bit of North America. Zygolophodon then evolved into the genus Mammoth, or the Mastodons, with the famed American Mastodon spreading across most of North America. Now, you would think that the genus of mastodons would be named, well, mastodons, which by the way means nipple tooth. Well, when the first mastodon fossil was described, the fossil was called mammoth because the fossil looked like it had mammoth teeth. However, once it was evaluated again, they figured out it was just a mastodon, and because the name mammoth was given before mastodon, that means taxonomic nomenclature rules means mastodon name had to be replaced. 
not because its name means nipple tooth. So, with all of that said, mastodons, or confusingly mammoths, aren't very related to mammoths and modern elephants, and in some ways this shows. Mastodons sort of just look like if you horizontally stretched a picture of a mammoth in Microsoft Paint, and their head looks like what would happen if you dropped an anvil on a mammoth's. Overall, the mastodon is shorter, but stocky, standing around 2.5 meters at the shoulder and about 6 to 7 metric tons on average. While woolly mammoths, one of the smaller mammoth species, reached 3 meters at the shoulder and around 4 to 6 tons, although bull males of both species could grow significantly larger. Mammoth and elephant heads are high and peaked, unlike the mastodon's flat skull. Mastodons also have a long, shaggy tail. Time-wise, mastodons and their family appeared on Earth a bit earlier before mammoths, with American mastodons and woolly mammoths briefly coexisting before the former went extinct. However, the true way to tell the difference between the two animals is the teeth. And remember that snappy quote from before? Well, it still applies to mastodons. Their weird name makes sense for their odd-shaped teeth. The teeth have these pointy ridges on the top of them, which allow the mastodon to crush twigs and leaves, all of which are forest vegetation. And here is the key difference. Mastodons are forest browsers, living in smallish herds eating the underbrush and leaves of the North American forests, fulfilling a completely different niche from mammoths. So that's a comparison of mammoths versus mastodons. Both relatively interesting animals who aren't just the same name for one creature, as you might have thought. As always, thanks to the sources I used in these videos. Although this one is a shorter video, I had to use more sources than I expected, mainly because this video ended up covering more things than I thought it would when the idea first popped in my head. It ended up being an interesting video to create, and I learned a lot from it. Of course, thank you for watching till the end, and see ya!